We're going to do a uh, show on the Armenian genocide, not tonight. <laughs> hey, write it down on your calendar. Sounds like popcorn night. <clears throat> but it's important for you to know it um, because we need to know who our friends are. And our friends are not Turkey, but our administration will tell you it is. Tonight, instead, I want to focus on something a little closer um, to show you who, who's influencing? What, what really happened? These are not uh, jihadi wannabes. I want to take you back to September 1st, 2004. Traditionally, it's the first day of school in Russia. And it's different than other typical days throughout the year because parents drop their kids off at school themselves. I remember dropping my kids off to uh, school the first time, uh, their first day too. And that day, parents were scrambling to get their children ready to go to school when a group of several, uh, several dozen heavily armed Islamic national guerrillas, Islamic jihadists, they left their forest encampment and they moved out. And they were wearing black masks and camouflage and some even had explosive belts on. And they were driving a police van and a military truck. It was 11, 19, uh, 11, 11 uh, sorry, 9-11 in the morning when they arrived at the school and they began storming the complex and took over 1,100 hostages. They forced everybody into this gym. They took all the cell phones from the adults and they rigged the school with explosives and threatened to kill 50 ho hostages for every terrorist that was killed, 20 hostages for each one of their wounded. They blew out windows so the authorities couldn't gas them out. They told everyone to keep quiet or they'd be shot. Watch. Там когда сидели, говорят боевики, мы вас убьем, если вы не замолчите. И я пугалась. А я говорю, когда Бима по собаку по по корме. И тепля, теплят. Они не могли утихнуть. И тогда один террорист сказал, я убью этого мужчину, если вы не, не затихнете. И люди все равно не затихали. Его высоким пистолет направил один террорист с бородой. И, и резко выстрелил, и у него сорта пошла кровь. Imagine your kids seeing this. Hostages gathered, gathered up around 20 of the strongest looking men, parents, teachers, brought them into um, a hallway just outside the gym, and they had them build a barricade. Then they killed them all. The bodies of the dead men were tossed out of a second story window. Terrorists didn't allow anyone to come and remove the bodies, so they just laid there for the remainder of the siege, which lasted three days. The hostages went without food or water. Food or water for three days, desperate for food and water, not allowed bathroom trips. After the first day, people just started going all over each other in the floor, and then they started drinking their own urine. Bottles, clothes, even a stuffed bunny soaked in urine was shared by the hostages just for moisture. At one point, the terrorists allowed nursing babies and their mothers to leave. Each mother who left had to leave behind an older child. One mother, One mother explained what it was like to hand her baby boy off to a negotiator as he left. Zelina was forced to choose. Take little Alan out to safety and leave Alana behind or stay and risk losing both her children. She left with Alan. Alana said, Ma, where are you going? When they grabbed her out of my arms, she got scared and cried. One by one, this procession of distraught mothers left the building. This is Zelina with Alan. To leave a child behind, it's beyond words. One has to live through this. Most 
of these mothers were leaving an older child behind. One of those children can be heard down the hall. By day three, the situation was starting to get a little desperate. Children had been stripped down to their underwear or even nude due to the heat. It was over 100 degrees, and the terrorists had released hostages in exchange for the release of terrorists are already in Russian custody. And then the initial explosion on the third day. Caused, they think, by a negligent terrorist being careless with a pressure trigger. <laughs> Мы там просто сидели, сидели, и вдруг я, у меня остались глаза открытыми, и взрыв. Я видела, как около этой, так... Кнопку, кто кнопку держал, вот он на части разорвался, так весь. After that, a second deliberate explosion occurred, uh, designed to kill as many as possible. Once that happened, armed civilians began storming the school. There was a fire in the main gym, and many hostages just burned to death. Ну они так плавали, плавились как вот нитка, когда поставишь на огонь, она собирается так. Страшно Hostages in, um, used the uh, ensuing confusion to escape. One young girl actually crawled back through a window to find her mom. The terrorists focused their fire on the people that were running out. Once the gym caught fire, the hostages were moved into a cafeteria. They set them up in windows as human shields. Up to 110 of them died after being moved, some of them shot by the soldiers and the militia in confusion. And after the melee, well over 300 people died. Reports on the actual death toll vary. At least 500 more were injured. All but one terrorist was killed, or they blew themselves up. Many of those rescued later died at the single overwhelmed hospital before they could be moved into better facilities. I'm telling you this story because these are the kind of animals that we are going to face in the future if we don't wise up. This is the kind of animal that our press and our administration want to tell you are just not a problem, they're jihad wannabes. Islamic extremists, Islamic jihadists, violent jihadists, are vermin that breed in the dark shadows of a society. And if there's no one shining any light there, they grow. It's why the report that the government and the press are now covering up on who's involved, this Saudi, the one that no one will talk about, that's why we will continue to shed light on it. Because we have to shine light on every place as there are. Every place that anyone else is afraid to look, we must look. And we must do it without becoming hateful or closing our hearts. It's going to be tough. But in the darkness is where they hide and where they breed. When we come back, I will show you the connections to Al-Qaeda Al and Saudi Arabia because there will be those who say, what are you talking about Beslan for? Because Al-Qaeda and Saudi Arabia were involved. And why we need to make sure we put a giant fence all around those that excuse mass murder. Because if you wanted to be technical, Al-Qaeda looks like a bunch of knockoff jihadists compared to those who have introduced themselves for the first time in our society.